Maya Rahal from WAMDA, entrepreneurs of the week today are Tare and Ala Srio from Sasko in Egypt. Hi, Tare. Hello, hi. Hi, Ala. Hi, how are you? Yes, Tare. Could you tell us a bit quickly in a couple sentences a bit introduction about Sasko? Uh, in Sasko, we are specialized in manufacturing stationery, paper products, plastic filing products, and the writing instrument pens and stuff. So uh, we, our focus main markets are in the Middle East and Africa and uh, in the past uh, 10 years we have uh, grown the company uh, uh, when and we gathered more products uh, into the market with uh, good quality and uh, very competitive price and we're now focusing on uh, more now in the export market in the, in the African region and of course some of the big Middle Eastern countries. Okay. So, okay. Tari, uh, you are uh, Vice President of Sales and Marketing, and Ala, you are Vice President of Manufacturing and Finances. Ala, can you tell us a bit how you helped improve and revamp Sasco since it was mainly originally uh, launched a bit about 30 years ago? Yeah, Sasco was established in 1975 around this period. It started with the manufacturing of pens. And then every, every, every after three, four years, we opened a new factory. Uh, the second one was also pens. And the third was mainly focused on uh, paper converting, notebooks, university notebooks, paper uh, block note for your office. And the fourth was focusing on plastic filing. And the fifth, uh, mainly pens and markers and highlighters and, uh, and sellotape. Uh, these are the six factories that we have. These are all the products that we produce. What we did is exactly we start. We added new lines to these. We added the envelopes. We added the envelope line, envelopes, you know, envelopes, of course. And we added a new, completely new pen brand called Block. This pen uh, actually is a, it's a boom in the market right now. The sales growth is around from 100 to 150 percent every year, which is very good. And we're adding new models every year, two new models to this brand, Block, our own brand, which we did from uh, uh, scratch. This is what we did. And of course, regarding the operation, we improved everything in the operation. The operation of manufacturing, the finance, we revamped all the power finance strategy and finance team. Okay, and we got consultancy also from other companies, like for example, some companies called Mears. It's something to do with finance. And we also have a, we did a new sales strategy, a new marketing strategy. All of this we did, revamped the company, and we have now a quality department, which was not present 10 years ago. We started like eight years ago, quality department in all our factories. This is what we all did. Exactly. Great. Uh, you guys are both co-CEOs. Um, Tare, you were telling me a bit before that you are launching a new B2B, you, you are launching a new B2B distributions uh, campaign and a new online system. Can you tell us more about it? Uh, actually, this uh, is a very unique uh, thing that's in the market uh, at the moment, where uh, our main focus is uh, on banks and the big companies that have the different branches around uh, Egypt. And what we do is actually uh, we give a chance to the company that each employee can go online and go to his stationery online and uh, we'll have a delivery after 48 hours anywhere in Egypt. Uh, we have like more than 1,000 SQ that in online that you can choose from. And uh, of course, uh, we also do some warehousing for uh, big, uh, big banks in Egypt like uh, commercial bank and HSBC and stuff. So actually it's a very new... new uh, New way, new way of uh, of, help, of uh, doing service to big banks and big companies in Egypt, and actually now it's doing very well. We have uh, this we open, we bought up the company this year, and we have signed five big contracts till now. Thank God. Great. So you are embracing e-commerce. Yes, exactly. In a different way. Yes. It's, it's, it's not like. It's not like e -com any e-commerce. E-commerce, like uh, for example, we have we can do a budget limit to each department. For example, we get we get solutions. We don't only supply them. We get solutions. For example, if you want the finance department to spend in the year fifty thousand dollars, we budget this. We give them like a limit that they cannot buy more than fifty thousand, and they can buy only, for example, twenty products. They cannot buy more. This is another example. And we tell them, we give them their sales uh, sales review every every month. What they bought, what they didn't buy, was their highest uh, selling, lowest selling. And uh, and warehousing, of course, we do the warehousing. We, uh, we store for them things and distribute to their branches. 
Okay. We do okay. Add, add, add value, we do like an add value service, not only distribution and an add value service. And what are the main challenges you are facing with this now? Of course, at the beginning, uh, you, you, can, you don't give up because you start making losses in the beginning for six, nine months, one year. All you're doing is losing. And then, of course, you're trying to grab a lot of clients, new clients. This is the most difficult thing to grab new clients. This is the most difficult thing. I'll continue to tell you what other difficulties you face. Uh, of course, our competition is a bit uh, not big companies, small, very small companies that only put very small margins and not very professional. So we had to compete with them by adding uh, the online system, which they don't have, and it costs a lot of money for them to do. So uh, our main point is the online system, which makes everything easy for uh, any company to order stationery and office needs and uh, break room uh, online and delivery is very fast. So this edge gave us a very strong uh, value uh, for customers. Uh, but of course, at the end of the day, uh, Egypt is very, very crowded. So sometimes we have a lot of problems uh, regarding delivery time and stuff. But we're managing, we're, uh, we're focusing on new ways to, uh, to make things better. And any startup, I advise the people, the entrepreneur, not to give up at the beginning. At the beginning is very difficult. You need to be persistent. You don't give up. Always be persistent. Do you feel like you are young entrepreneurs, even though you're not working in a startup, you're working in an, uh, a relatively old company? Uh, actually, for me, I think uh, the starting in a family company uh, is much more harder than uh, starting up from zero. Because you're going to a company that's already established and you have a lot of things in your mind that you need to implement in the company. So you have to find a way how to convince everyone that's working in the company that's more than five, six, 500, 600 employees and tell them, okay, I think this is better for us and we need to switch our strategy from this to this. So convincing uh, these people, of course, and uh, of course, uh, value added to our company, but uh, changing their mentality is very, very difficult. So uh, we faced a lot of problems at the beginning till we proved ourselves and that our new strategies is doing well and uh, uh, making uh, good volumes in sales and also make us make, making our brand much more uh, stronger. Brand everything. And regarding, uh, regarding this point as well, uh, the problem is the old clients. You find that like, there's the people who have been with you for 20, 30 years and they have the old mentality and you didn't give them uh, support courses and updated them with the new new uh, education and all the new uh, strategies that people implement, new companies implement. So they're old cards and they have the old thing. So to make the change, you need to have someone next to them and bit by bit uh, have them out and make them understand the new strategy that they're implementing. Which means mix the new blood with the old blood and uh, eventually uh, the old blood will be convinced that uh, the new th way of thinking is much more uh, better than uh, the old... Uh, old and uh, new generation of course. Yes. So there are a bit different challenges than the usual entrepreneur in Egypt are facing yeah. today, but you still have a lot of challenges. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So uh, what are your plans? What are your next steps? Our next step is uh, in which in in or my plan. My plan actually to take the B two B around the Middle East uh, in the upcoming few years and uh, to start having uh, more brand equity around the region for Sasco brands and uh, ballpoint pens in the upcoming few years. And Ali, of course, in the manufacturing is doing a lot of hard work uh, in uh, uh, making the manufacturing lines always busy and always efficient uh, with the biggest volumes we can do. What we're trying to focus on exactly is to have a, uh, Sasco to have a very strong brand equity in all the Middle East and African markets. We don't want to, for example, to give to big uh, chains like Walmart and uh, Speed Figures and this with their brand. We want to make our brand popular in these countries, Middle East and Africa. We want our brand to be a strong name. Everyone to ask for Sasko in station. This is what we want to do in Middle East and Africa. And regarding the B2B, like Tariq said, we want to have it uh, on a bigger scale. Like for example, Sasko can supply the B2B and we have, of course, for different suppliers, not only Sasko. And uh, we go from there and make Sasko uh, the very strong uh, company, the biggest station in the Middle East and Africa. Plus. SOS to be the biggest B2B e-commerce uh, supplier in the Middle East and Africa as well, hopefully. <laughs> great, great. Yeah. Tara and Ala Asriyo, both co-CEOs of Sasco in Egypt, thank you for chatting with Wamda, and we wish you all the best luck.
Thank you very much.